the real thrust is about growing the business, growing the expertise, you know, that passion to do better. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and in today's episode, I am joined by two distinguished guests from Kunstorfin and Wright. First, we have Michael Lampard, the Group Director at Kunstorfin Wright. Michael is the visionary force behind the practice's creative approach, ensuring that strong design-led principles are at the core of every project. His commitment to delivering sustainable and responsive solutions has made a significant impact across various sectors, with a particular focus on the student residential sector. Michael's impressive portfolio includes designs for listed buildings, high-rise constructions, boutique interiors and large-scale projects with over a thousand student beds. Known for his ability to challenge conventional norms, Michael consistently develops bold, innovative and practical architecture solutions that captivate and inspire. Joining Michael is Paul Turner, whose practical and inventive design approach is matched by his exceptional ability to engage both public and private stakeholders in the design process, the driving force behind the day-to-day -day operations at Gustafin and Wright. Paul is renowned for his strategic leadership and dedication to nurturing the practice's homegrown talent. A natural motivator, Paul mentors young architects and technicians, helping them develop technical skills and a deep passion for design quality. In today's episode, we talk about the growth of Gustafin and Wright through mergers and how to be able to do that successfully. We look at the sorts of businesses that work well um, in a merger and the kinds of business foundations that need to be in place for that kind of growth strategy to work well. We look at preserving and enhancing company cultures, both of the existing firm and of new um satellite offices or new offices that were emerging. And we also look and discuss at depth how good business supports good design. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mike Lampard and Paul Turner. And now a message from today's sponsor. If you haven't used RCAT's Spec Wizard before, hey, now's the time to try it out. Spec Wizard is a patented tool that allows you to specify a product in just three steps, all for free, and without even registering. Step one, research and find the right products for your project on rcat.com. Step two, use the spec wizard tool to select the right products and options. Step three, generate a complete three-part CSI or CSC specification based on your selections. Now, maybe you enjoy toiling through long documents, parsing things together and creating a specification. And if that's your case, well, this probably isn't for you. But if you wanna get it done in half the time that it used to, or even a fraction of that, RCAT is your place. Again, Spec Wizard is free to use and requires zero registration. So to use it, head over to rcat.com. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com today and try Spec Wizard. RCAT is a fantastic resource and one that I counted on when I was actively practicing architecture to help me simplify getting these important specifications right. Mike, Paul, welcome to the business of architecture. How are you guys? Yeah, yeah, we're really good, actually. Great, right. really thanks. Yeah, good to see you. Excellent, excellent to be speaking with you. Now, you guys are the kind of presidents, the CEOs, if you like, or the directors, principals of um, Corstimpine Rights. Did I say that right? No, no, it's always a good one. Well, it's a good old Scottish name, it's, Sco which is actually Kostorfin. Kostorfin, Kostorfin yeah. Right. Kostorfin, but actually everybody calls it Kostorfin. Yeah, correct. So the Scots would say it's Gustafen because it's a it, part of Scotland. It's one of the hardest companies to remember. Yeah. So everybody remembers it. Yeah. But yeah, it's difficult to forget that everybody can't spell it. And nobody can spell it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And where did the name come from? So it came from uh, Tom Wright and John Gustafen, who set up a practice in Leamington Spa, um, back in the 70s, that's where it came from. And I was actually in touch with Tom Wright um, last week just mm -hmm. to have a chat and to have a bit of a catch-up because I, I always think it's interesting when you take on the name of somebody else, they must they must sort of wonder what, what you're doing and why you're doing it. And, and also it's quite nice to kind of go back and give them some kudos as well because at the end of the day, we're using their name. Well, it's the DNA, isn't it? It's like anything. Yeah. Everything story everything has a, a backdrop to where it's coming from and i think you should always remember that anything you do 
Well, it's, it's, it's a very impressive architectural organization that you guys have got. You've got studios in Leeds, London, Darlington, Glasgow as well, right, like right across the, the country. And you've got an enormous amount of work in mixed use, residential, there's civic projects there, there's student accommodation or student villages that you've, you've been involved with, institutional work. So a very impressive portfolio with, you know, very demanding uh, and rigorous clients and from an outside perspective like it's a it's a fantastic looking business and I think we were just talking talking about now uh, you know just before we jumped on the call um, we'll talk a little bit about how you guys have grown and some of the methods that you've used to acquire other organizations and you know that's a, a very kind of strong way of developing talent or kind of grabbing talent if you like how did you guys get into into business? I, just, I was going to say, just to be back, it's actually a privilege to do all of this work, you know, that we get to do for our clients. So it's fun and we can't believe we got a business out of it. So but that's just responding to your points about the cross-section of work we've got. I think the, yeah, the starting point was probably through frustration where we mm-hmm. did work and when we were, we didn't have a business. Um, so we, sort of the corporate nature of the business that we were in. So we met in 2005 uh, when, or actually it was 2004, when I joined uh, Kostorfin and Wright or a previous version of Kostorfin and Wright uh, and started working with Paul pretty immediately on, on commercial projects, office projects. And uh, I think we kind of just hit it off straight away, really, in yeah, terms of the work that we were doing, because we, we're quite similar people, we've got quite similar backgrounds, but we do operate in quite different ways. Paul's quite logical and strategic, and I'm the kind of bouncy designer who, you know, Paul will tell me what the rules are, and I'll give him back a put an answer to the puzzle, which is different, but it is the rules. So it kind of works quite it well. Is, yeah, way, yeah. Doesn't it, really? So if we... we we kind of learned to work together and we worked on a lot of projects together initially. Uh, and we kind of, you know, we, we, I mean, we were, we were, we were sort of not directors of that business. We were just, in fact, I came in as a, as a designer or was a director of major projects. Yeah, was your title, sort of a title, it? a title yeah. Yeah, in an organization to make yourself very <clears throat> important. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, so we just we just hit it off really, and I think I think over that period of time, over that sort of so Christophe and right as we got it today, um, the sort of new version really was was kicked off in two thousand and ten, <laughs> and and came out of the frustration of us working hard, but I suppose having the confidence of being able to do it for yourself, mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know, and creating a an environment that actually we wanted everybody to enjoy. It felt slightly, in the organisation we came from, it was slightly acidic, you had a number of things, and we just felt that we could do it better and easier and better quality of work. You know, it, was the, it was the drive to, to be better and to do things better for our clients, which is, funny enough, still one of the focuses yeah, today, right. pushing ourselves. And you talked at the start about the type of work that we do, but in reality, I mean, I, I firmly believe that as an architect, you should be able to take a brief and assimilate information and be able to design anything. And I think mm-hmm. we've proven over time that we do that and we've yeah. we've changed what we do on a regular basis, working on different types of projects. But the rea- reality is, particularly now, um, is, is, is somebody actually going to trust you to deliver a project that you've never done before? And, and I think we were fortunate enough that people trusted what we did to allow us to do that, which was which was. Yeah, as Paul said, it's a privilege to be able to be in that position that people trust you mm. for what you do. Um, but when we kicked off this version of C and W, there were there were four of us in the studio in in Warwick, uh, a building that we didn't own. We were lent it by a developer friend of ours who let us use the space for a period of time. It was really seat of your pants stuff when we started the business, <laughs> and I think so. It was a sort of. I think any businessman, uh, any business person, there's this element of naivety when you dive into, you know, creating your own business and the responsibilities that it it brings. But, you know, we were young. We believed that, you know, we could we take over the world. We were young. Yeah, we, 
thought uh, uh, personalities would shine through and that everybody oh, would want to join us. Absolutely. It would just be fun all the way, you know. So uh, we, you, we you, didn't was, know. You, you were starting at a pretty precarious time though as well 2010 yeah, still right, kind of yeah, right. recovery mode well, yeah. we, hadn't, we hadn't thought about doing it in 2008 <clears throat> it just felt completely wrong um, and, it, and in fact one of the regional directors of the practice we were working at the time actually said why don't you two go and do something and we were like no, no. i think the other thing is my father died in that year as well and i right. think sometimes you think actually let's do it you know we're only here i mean we were probably in completely the wrong place you know, mortgages, you know, completely yeah, right kids. in the middle, young kids, you know, so absolute stupidity really in hindsight. But, um, yeah, the, uh, you know, if, if you look at it from a business brain point of view now, and we always say, you know, would people do it, but bear on what we know now. But, yeah, no, I mean, it was good. We we started the business, didn't we, with, with Jeff, one of our sort of really he's been a sort of a mentor to us as well as a, um, you know, as a colleague and a friend. And, um, you know, with him, we just went for it. We threw ourselves into it. We worked hard, you know, and within, you know, a few months, we started to yeah. see the benefits of being good to people, being nice to, you know, carrying on being nice to our clients, trying the very best you can do and more. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then a business sort of starts. That's the that's the sort of the the birth of a business that we we got going. But we've always had this view, really, that the business is the bit that you know you have to look after because it looks after you. If you don't yeah. have a strong business, it, it can't look We're after just passengers you. on it. Yeah. So you know, it sounds really bizarre, but in our first year, you know, and a really really important thing for us was that at the Christmas of the first year we gave people who work with us, mm. the Christmas bonus. We, we actually took we took a base salary at the start because we just didn't know and we wanted to make sure it, it worked. Um, and and, I, and that's that's really something that we've that stuck with us all the way through, that if you look after it, it will look after you when times are hard. Because mm -hmm. in reality, it's seen, you know, I've not worked in many practices in my time, but in reality, um, you sort of take bits from each practice and when we sort of started talking about growing this business, we knew what we didn't want to do. And we knew that it had to be collaborative because otherwise it does become toxic. If, if you don't share work and you don't collaborate with people, then naturally people are going to say, well, that's my project. I'm working on it and you not anything to do with it. But if you share it and you show people that you work on projects together and win projects together and you share the profit from that project, then... Yeah, Actually, that's a far easier I suppose way it's, doing it's it. being fair, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and we really appreciate some of the guys that have worked with us, you know, right from that day, they still work for us now. So, you know, you get to this point, don't you, that you're, you're in business, you employ quite a lot of people, you now feel responsible for not only your own family, but all the families of the people that you now employ, because you've seen them since they were very relatively young, mm -hmm. they've grown up, they've got married, they've got kids. You know, you know their kids. So it is a family. And when mine mm -hmm. talks about us looking after the business, we don't now look after it for ourselves. We look after it for the people that are going to take mm -hmm. it forward in the future. So this is always a business that is looking way, way past just the next couple of years. This is 10, 20 years ahead. So yep. every decision we make, we make on the basis that we're trying to protect the business Every, you know, uh, you know, when we do buy businesses, their uh, due diligence is like painful because we try and unearth anything that could catch us out later on. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, it, it's a twofold. It's being forensic about what you're taking in and making sure there's no risk. But then it's being flexible and sort of encouraging and sort of sharing with the with what you've got. So, so some sort of key values of which yeah, are absolutely. one of the things that we really, you know, we live our own lives by them as well as our business. So, so in the course of, the one. in the course of the last 14 years, then, you know, you, you guys started off as a four man team yeah. and, and what kind of scale are you at now? Obviously you've got, you've got offices all over the country. Yeah, we're, we're just, we're just around 330 people at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so that's, so that's, 
So, so we've got, we're sort of nearly the in the near near to the top ten architecture practices in in the UK. Somebody told us interest in fact that we were seventy second in the world wow. in terms of number of architects that we employ. So that is like a bit of a shock. Well, well that I mean that, that that's yeah, extraordinary. In, yeah, starting a business to you know developing that since 2010. Say that again, sorry, I missed the question. So, so that's, that is extraordinary, right? That for a lot of practices, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't often see practices get to that, this kind of scale and size. What yeah, has so been, think, what, think, what's uh, been the strategy or, or was, did you intend on growing the, the business this size or? Well, it was never really, it was never really a strategy apart from, <laughs> it was never really a strategy apart from, apart from just doing the best job that you possibly can. Yeah, and by default, you got more work, so we needed more people. Yeah. And, then, and then, because we said, we're not actually that good a businessman, but what we are is we see the obvious, yeah, and I think that's how we've made a success by just seeing the obvious. So we realized that actually, if you take a business in, and we've, we've developed this as, as the years have gone by, you can very quickly get resource and, a, and an operational business that has also got income in, as well as adding more work into that business and um, getting maximization of it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you reduce its cost because your overhead comes shared across greater numbers of people. And what's happened in the industry, I mean, you could say we were, you know, we were visionary. It wasn't that, you know, we were, we were solving a problem at that point in time. But what's happened to the business just recently in architecture that, your overhead cost has got so significant with PI insurance and and licensing that actually a small uh, you know a, a small practice now it's very very difficult you know with all the mm -hmm. legislative requirements as well to actually start up. So that business that we did probably in two thousand and ten you know would actually be quite difficult today to do. So what we're now finding is that. We're in this place where we are now becoming this vehicle, and we call it a community. We call it well, the collaboration, don't we? It's, it's a collaboration of people and practices and expertise for the benefit of our client, and we're just coming together in this sort of cooperative. So yeah. every, but everybody has to pass a test, the values test that we call it. So we've got to like the people. We've got to, you know, if you're going into business with people, you need to trust them. So trust mm -hmm. is a really big thing. But if you look at some of the other large practices, you know, Fosters or Zaha uh, Hadid as a, as a large scale practice, mm -hmm. they're built around a reputation of, 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 of one person, one key individual, and everybody kind of buys into that ethos. Um, I mean, when I, when I first started working with Paul, um, that sort of version, of course, of Fianna Wright was owned by um, a guy who was trying to compile a practice to make a super practice. And, he, and he'd got 10, 11 different yeah. practices across the UK. But what they didn't do was they didn't integrate properly. So all that happened right. is that, you know, you might have had a practice in Leeds. They've got a project in Birmingham right next door to the Birmingham office, and they wouldn't share the work, and it just didn't make any sense, yeah. you know. So we've got to learn from that, that way of working. And I think that, that you know, Paul talked about, the, the sort of the, the design collective earlier on, which is, we, we I personally got quite frustrated because you know I, I I don't want to be a typical architectural practice. I don't think we should be a typical architectural practice because I think I think there's different ways of doing things in different ways, mm. and um, I got a little bit frustrated because when the press would talk about us, they'd say, "Oh, they're acquisition hungry," or they're growing because they didn't really know what we were. And, and, what, I said, and what our values are about, what our yeah. key objectives are. And I, yeah. and, I, and I sort of sat and thought, well, do we actually say what we are? Do we actually express what we are so that people understand what we're doing? And I sat and thought, we went through, we got a whole lot of people together. We went through sort of asking questions about, well, who are we like? And the, question, the answer came back, well, we don't really want to be like anybody else. We want to be the most authentic version of ourselves. And we came up with this idea of a design collective because really when you look at what we do and how we've grown, it's about collecting skill. It's about collecting mm -hmm. ability. And it's also about collecting skill in certain locations. And I think certainly since yeah. COVID's happened, 
That's right, Mike. It, 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 it layers up. So it's basically, it's, it's a very sustainable approach to having strategic locations in many different places across the country. From an overhead perspective, yeah, okay, yeah. it's probably not, not good. But what it does mean, you're very close to wherever your work source is. So you have, you have two layers of, of sort of expertise. You have a, a national overarching sort of state of the market, what's happening in the south compared to the north. But equally, you have local knowledge. So somebody who's operating in the south, yeah, really doesn't know how to operate in the north. Mm-hmm. Because of that local knowledge, and when you, what we tend to find is when we get other practices going and working in those locations that are probably based out of London, there's a slight distinct disconnect between what that location wants and needs to what they think they should have. You know, everywhere isn't London, albeit we do learn a lot from what comes out of London. I think that's, and it's definitely at the forefront of pushing on design, design process and things like that. Mm-hmm. But it's very local, you know, what people want to – we talk right. about listening to our clients. We talk about listening to the local authority. It's never a dictatorship. It's always a tell us what you want and we'll yeah. try and disseminate that into a, into a solution. You know, and do you find that you have a very good kind of specialist expertise where you can work with a client, say, in Leeds, and then help them do developments in London or Darlington or other, other parts of the country? Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things, one of the things that you know, Christophe and Wright has always been able to do is work with clients who then want us to work in other parts of the UK. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. that's been a key strength. So you'll mm-hmm. have, you know, Paul and myself, we, we basically go wherever the clients want us to go, and they trust us to do that. Mm. Um, there are some of our studios who do work locally and have got that local knowledge. But, you know, so recently we can, we can demonstrate very clearly that we've won work through having collected skill in different locations, having local So it's local like it's layering, that's what we said. So it's yeah. sector expertise, it's being the best in your sector from a knowledge perspective and being in touch with the market. Then there's the local knowledge so it's knowing the local planning department, knowing the local councillors and, you know, who those are and, and actually talking the language, you know, <laughs> of that area. But it so, also gives us the agility to be able to say, I mean, you know, we've been in that situation before where you get that, you get that one CV that's an amazing person who isn't where you work, you know. So in, so in some rare occasions, actually, we've said, well, okay, well, let's, let's build a studio around you then. Let's actually... Mm-hmm take that as a, as a gamble and do that. And, and people are like, oh, well, I didn't even know you could do that. You know, so we've done that before. And, you know, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and that's what happens, isn't it? So the business of business, yeah, it's sort yeah. of an organic thing. And we tend to grow at anything from 20 to 30% a year. Now, that's, mm. those figures are slightly, um, slightly fudged in the fact that it depends on, what you're allowed to say what fudged. what i'm not allowed to say fudge from an accounting term, but, <laughs> uh, but in this conversation i think fudged is fine it's yeah fine. um so it's, it's also <laughs> trying to yeah so you what you do is you attach a business they have their workload yeah but then what happens is is because they can tap into all these sector specialisms Mm-hmm. Their client network then recognizes that they can give them more work. So it's like a snowball, and that's what's been happening to us over the years. So we keep acquiring specialisms, but as we acquire specialisms, we acquire market share across the country because people like the way that CNW operate. You know, we're not, you know, we don't send loads of legal letters out when people don't pay us. We try and talk to them. The mm-hmm. whole business is so, out you know, having a, a conversation with somebody. You know, it's understanding it's not really, a client's cash flow and understanding yeah, project just, cash flow. Just trying to understand what people want. I mean, most of, most of the people that we that we work with and become part of CNW are people that we've known for a while or they're known to us for a particular thing. So the mm-hmm. most recent merger, we, we don't try and call them acquisitions because we see it as a merger because ultimately, you know, we like to think that you you merge and you get people to join the group because they can – bring something to the party, you know, that they have their own skill and ability. Because 
you know, in reality, we're not cocky enough to think that we get it right every time. Every day is a score day, and you learn to do well, things. Well, that's it. That's another one of the key key components of CNW. We will never get to where we need to be. Right. This is always improved bad. So yeah. not being restless in a funny kind of way, making sure that we're, you know, we're agile, that we're looking at the markets, we're trying to read the markets, we're trying to understand the, you know, the financial institutions, where they're going. Uh, so there's a lot of background. So, you know, our business development strategy is linked to research. Mm-hmm. So we do we do a lot of research in each of the sectors and it's becoming, as we've grown, it's becoming more sector led because we know we need to know what the market's doing to decide whether we're going to invest in that sector or we're going to, you know, pivot and go in a different direction at, um, or look for new, you know, new opportunities in different markets. Mm-hmm. But in reality, planning process which is obviously the start of any project um is is still a is still a sort of a human process yeah of going and talking to people and, and you know trying to explain your idea about you know why they should let you build a, a 40 story tower on that site or you know why it should be influenced by a certain thing you know there, there's there's always the humanity side of things i mean it's interesting because the the the, the, the practice that have just merged with us we actually spoke to them 14 years ago about joining when we first started, actually, because yeah. we both came out to the same practice that, that, that fell apart. Um, and they wanted to do their own thing at that time. But I was talking to uh, head of marketing, Sarah, just now, and she said, when we walked into that studio, it felt like CMW. <laughs> it felt like a CMW studio. And that's lovely that you know that the people that you're working with have got the same values and logic. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't say that, you know, yes, we've, yes, we've grown and we've, 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 we've merged with lots of different practices over the time. Have we got it right every time? No, no, we haven't got it right every time. We made lots of mistakes. Yeah, well, you do. So it's, it's well, interesting would... when we talk about mergers or acquisitions, you know, a lot of people might get a bit sort of, suspicious of it or frightened of it not really understanding what it's about but it's a very it's a very sensible way to grow an architecture practice and in terms of just being stronger together i mean i'm a big proponent that actually collaborating and unifying architecture practices makes life a hell of a lot easier for for so many i'd really worry worry if i if i walked into practice of 350 people yeah i'd really worry that that, you know you, you get a situation where you've got a problem Mm-hmm. then you're, you're a bit stuffed, aren't you? you know, but it's mm-hmm. also keeping it personal. I mean, that's the problem. So so one of the other components of it, our offices aren't that big. You know, right. the, probably some of our biggest offices are 40 to 45. We've got 50 mm-hmm. person. Yeah, we could have yeah. 60 people. Yeah, so, so we keep them relatively small. So they still feel like, you know, the entrepreneurial sort of individual uh organizations because you know architecture as a profession it isn't really it isn't lawyers is it it's a, li- a group of, of creatives all sat together well, architects mm-hmm. don't like rules, do they? and they you sort of need to you sort of need that sort of i don't know intimacy to get quality in a, in yeah. our mind but mm-hmm. we might change them up we might change the rules because that's what we do we change them as we go along but um that's the theory at the moment is just having enough critical mass that gives it an identity, gives it a substance, you know, that you're a reasonable size practice. Mm-hmm. But it's the, you know, it's it's the power of IT now and the connections and the mm-hmm. link servers that actually what the clients do like is the fact that we can connect everybody together in a very, you know, we have a big resource pool that we can move work around and it's and it's that flexible with the way that we operate. Can you so walk we us- sort of develop offer can you walk us through what it's like when you actually merge with another practice like how does the conversations begin how do you identify the right sort of businesses for you to be partnering up with in this aspect what happens to the previous owners what kind of what kind of performance do you expect to see from dating (laughs) i call it dating so it's like anything you don't rush into a date yeah. yeah, you go and get to know somebody first. Yeah, and you understand what it is they're about. I'm glad mm-hmm. you because you got to be respected enough. Well, I haven't really, <laughs> but I like to think I have. My, my age, yeah. So I think it is. It's like you know, lexicon of love. 
It Lexi Kidna Love, yeah. It's gonna be that was the in that's the song. So we can have a backdrop of Lexi Kidna Love coming in. What you read to uh they've got the golden line made. You gotta see. But yeah, it, it is. So it's that first impression. We go and meet people and I always say that you can tell within five minutes of walking in the room whether right. you have that chemistry. Yeah. And mm-hmm. but then it's then it is because architectural practices are very good at run, uh, uh, ra- rather very bad at running a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some places we go into and we look at them, we go, actually, you're bankrupt, you know, mm-hmm. and we don't really want to get involved with it. But there are other businesses that we see, you know, you've got to have the, the acorn of something good to start with to be able to grow it. So, you know, you're never going to teach people that don't know how to run a business to run to be party to C&W because that whole entrepreneurial bit of joining C and W. So your question was, you know, so we take a while, mm-hmm. we get to know people, we get to try and understand what they want from a business in the future, and we try and assess whether that aligns with what everything that we talk about, you know, within within the sort of the values that we put out to our, our guys and girls yeah. in the in the in the offices. So we'd only ever do a we'd only ever do a deal with a with another practice if the people who are we're doing a deal with are yeah. staying. Yeah, you know, and I don't want to re- we don't want retirees. And, 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 and unless there's a particular reason why somebody wants to exit. But yeah. the the nucleus of that they need to have been in business for needs, ten years be, at least. So they need to have shown a track record of running right. a business. Yeah. yeah. And and not gone bankrupt clearly, um, but, but they also need to do something which is you know which has similarities to what we do, but isn't just more of the same. Mm-hmm. You know, we're looking for something which is which is unique as an added value. And yeah. and I think you know as as the, as the business gets bigger, I mean one of the benefits is we're able to concentrate on the bit that we're good at. I mean if you're a a one two three four man practice, then you all have to do bits of everything to make that practice work. And I think the benefit that we found by by growing the business is it means we can focus on the bits that we're good at. Because we used to do HR, we used to do a bit of finance, we do we used to do a bit of this. And actually it, it we used to say that we're the bottleneck. So as mm-hmm. the business has got you're about to you're able to get an expert person in who can do that for you. Exactly. And uh, you know another mantra is always employ people who are more intelligent than you. Which oh yeah, we always, there's, there's lots of people. Hard. Yeah, we we it's easy for us to because we're not very clever. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you always you always employ better people. But, but, but certainly the growth, the growing pains. I mean, we, I mean what what we experienced, you know, as as we grew as a business was that you know as we said before, you know, we 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 were the bottleneck, but also. You know, part of what we've done is, is, is to make sure that the practice has a legacy. You know, mm-hmm. so one of the things you do, as, if you've got a business that grows and grows and grows, you're just creating a big problem because then, then if you want to bring new people in, yeah. how do you get them? Well, we haven't, answered, buy into we, haven't, them? we haven't answered the first question because your question is, what do we do when we bring a business in? So we date them, we get yep. to know them, yeah. We decide whether we like them or not, yeah. <laughs> then we do a thing. We do this sort of. You know, we try and get to a point where we we have a, a heads of terms. So that's a, a financial agreement. Are, so are they are they finding you or are you finding them? It depends. Some people, both. Appro- some people both. approach us. Yeah. yeah, Some people approach us. I mean, the, the, say the last the last practice that have come in, mm-hmm. um, I I contacted them about three years ago, and 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 the guy there said that's really bizarre. Because <laughs> we just sat down and said, if we were going to do anything with anybody, who would we do it with? And we said it was you. Mm-hmm. And then it was like a real serendipity, you know. But we helped them. There was an existing partner. We helped them exit that existing partner. Right? So we we come with some benefits because we've done a lot of this stuff before. Right. You know, so we can help people, structure people that are exiting as well as obviously bringing people across. But the important bit in all of this outcome is, Yes, we might we might give them some uh, financial benefits, some cash or whatever it is in the way. But what we tend to do is it tends to be a fifty percent share and and um, equity sort of um, a deal. So they always end up being a shareholder in C and W effectively. Right. So 
they become our partners. We just have a piece of pie and they just get shared more. Mm-hmm. But obviously what they do, I mean, there are there are other reasons for it as well from a business valuation point of view, that if you're buying a relatively small business, yeah, and you're at a two or three times multiple, there's a thing called arbitrage that we talk about in the valuation world. Yeah, and clearly us as a business who are at eight, so instantly mm-hmm. that smaller business that might be earning X, its value is straight away, as soon as it's attributed to C&W, is greater. Goes up, but that's yeah. Not, that's not the sole focus. That's a sort of a, a byproduct of us being in business and just being aware of all of these things. The real thrust is about growing the business, growing the expertise, mm-hmm. you know, that passion to do better and to, you know, bring more friend, friends around the table to make the business, you know, even more successful. But it has another benefit as well. So, you know, when you have a client who wants to give you more and more and more work, yeah. you need to be able to show that layering again, that you've got other people that can respond and they're not just yeah. seeing the same faces over and over again. And I think that's something that we've learned as well because, you know, you've got to be able to address that because ultimately, you know, I remember years ago having a conversation with a contractor about projects and saying, you know, well, you know you're working with X. And they'd say, well, we work with X because we know we can throw six projects at them. Yeah. And they'll do it. Mm-hmm. And and it's like, well, we're now in that position where they where they can do that to us as well and we respond well. But and I think I think for, for us it's about trying to do something which is different from the, the, the norm in terms of the way architects operate. I, you know? I also think, you know, we provide warranties to our clients. If you're in a really fa- fragile business, that's that's dishonest, isn't it? Because <laughs> to you carrying on with that warranty in the ne- for the next 12 years, you know, I, I actually think sometimes when clients employ, you know, not smaller practices, but less financially stable practices. They don't realize the risk. They've got no idea the risk no. they're in, entering into. So, yeah. so if you look at the way that the industry is going now with, you know, reduced risk, the, the funds that are, you know, basically promoting a lot of these projects across the country, mm-hmm. you know, that is another reason I think why CNW are also starting to do well because, mm-hmm. yes, we make profit. I, mean, I know it's a dirty word, but, yeah, we make good profit in CNW. <laughs> But that also means that we've got longevity. You know, we're running a business really well. You know, we're on it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have to make those, you know, when things are difficult, we have to make difficult decisions. But we do them in a really nice and pleasant and, you know, courteous way. As though, well, yeah, you know, and, a, and, a, and a sophisticated and a sophisticated client will appreciate, you know, that you're able to do the project properly, that you're running at a decent profit. I mean, I know in conversations with developers, actually, you know, the sorts of converse, the sorts of things that they consider when hiring an architect is they're looking for the financial health of their organization. They don't want to be put in their projects. Certainly, the more sophisticated sorts of developers, they don't want to be put in their projects at risk with an architectural company that has got no idea about how the business side of it is is operating. Yeah. And you, and also it gives you the ability to be able to talk the language of your of your client and you know understand what their business well, agendas it, are. Yeah, but, yeah, the language is important. But I think also, you know, I mean, we we do get approaches from other businesses trying to acquire C and W, um, and we've always tried to make sure that that you know that we stay strong, we stay as individuals, and we mm. stay. In the in the future, giving a legacy to all the people that work within CNW, so they can own the company. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like a, an MBO or anything like that. We find a strategy to bring people up and get shareholding. So, there are people who have been here for years, yep. that didn't that have not necessarily bought into the business. They buy mm-hmm. it indirectly by whether it be you know long term incentive plans for for shares or alike. So. You're continually trying to share this benefit of the business Mm -hmm. because we think that by sharing, you know, if everybody does well, we do even better. So that is the, you know, so we're never going to be dictators. We're going to be, you know, encouraging behind anybody who wants to be part of the business. We would say, 
they say, what do we want, you know, what can we do to be a director? We always say, well, just go and do what mm -hmm. you, you know, add value, bring something different to the party. I mean, a phrase it's we use a lot is, why would we not want you to be successful? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it doesn't make any sense. So there are some people who get very... I think that's one of my phrases. Is it one of yours? Yeah, it is. I find mine. Yeah. But... Just you said we. We, 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 I, you. Um, <laughs> there's no I in team. Correct, there's no I in team. Um, but, but, but in 2019, we, we, we got to a point where um, the way that the business operated at that point was that you had Christophian right in the centre and all the businesses that had merged with us were all separate companies. Right. It became really wieldy and really difficult. Device. So it really became very difficult because each business was a company. We were a shareholder of that company and C&W as well. So you were essentially like so a holdings it, company that owned in lots effect, of different... Yeah. Right. So what we did in 2019 is we basically changed the whole thing. We changed the shareholders. Well, yeah, we used to own 50% in each of the companies. Mm -hmm. But what we saw is it was divisive that you got lots of multiple companies sort of competing against itself. Yeah. So we restructured the company so everybody is a shareholder in C and W. Now, most organizations break that down. We were trying to reduce the barriers and we talk about this is one company mentality. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're in Darlington or you're in London, we all work for that same company. Our focus is for the benefit of the company, not the location. So the bonus pool that we operate is a, is a, is a bonus pool across the whole business. And part, part of that bonus is if the business makes profit, then everybody yeah. gets a bonus. Because why should there be a bonus? You might be sitting in a studio and working really hard. And, you know, that year you might not be doing so well. But there shouldn't be a postcode lottery, so why should it operate in that way? <laughs> um, it's called leveling up. <laughs> leveling up, yes. <laughs> Architectural level up. I think that's a phrase that's been and gone. Does it? Does it? Yeah, right. Yeah, it might be gone. Past, I think it might be yeah. gone by the 5th of July. Correct. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're getting political. Um, but, but, but so we, we made a decision to effectively, <laughs> gift, effectively gift part of a shareholder. We told you we'd give you humour, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, we don't help us out. To, 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 to an EMI share. What are we compared to? Who's the guys that do those? Do the fishing trips. Oh, Bob Mortimer and, and, yeah, and, 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 and Paul, uh, Paul White. Paul Whitehouse, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, yeah we, we thought it was, we, were, we were going to talk about all sorts of things. We were going to talk about nature, weren't we? The other nature. Day. Yeah. Well, well, you well no, you were talking about how lovely the trees were. Oh. I was trying to keep myself awake. Oh, were you? <laughs> you in your car. I was just trying to change the subject. Yeah. I was, yeah. You were getting bored. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just... <laughs> I just thought we'd uh, we'd go off off piece for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and when we went through that restructuring, we were sitting, yeah, we were sitting we were sitting in front of the lawyers, and they said, "Well, why are you giving value away?" It's like, well, if we don't do that, we won't have a business. You won't mm -hmm. have people. You know, I've seen too many businesses, not not many, but I've seen too many businesses fall over when people retire, as an example, because yeah. they they think, oh, "I've worked all this time." I'm entitled to the full value of this, and I'm going to walk away with a big we, I mean, our thing is we love this business. We love the people in it. We love, you know, the fact that they're, okay, yeah, we're shareholders, people are employees, but they're all the same to us. We all work for the same business. We just sort of all have different jobs to do. Yeah. But, but actually, everybody's as important as anybody. You know, nobody really, we call about the ultimate flat structure, but... Uh, that would be our ideal situation, but you can't in organisations like this. You do have to have a, a hierarchy. People mm -hmm. want that career development, but sure. And it's really know, difficult as well. It's a shame. Really. It's really difficult as well because when you're a, when you're a practice of our size, you've got to have a degree of kind of corporate structure around the edges of it, and that's mm -hmm. what we fight against a little but, bit. But we know that that corporate structure allows us to play inside it. You know, so, so, so how how do you organise then, the, kind of internally, and and certainly whilst you're kind of bringing in other other businesses, and they might have had their own internal structure. How does that kind of get merged with with yours, and how do you resolve conflicts? And so do you ever and, and do you ever see conflict? Does it ever kind of not go smoothly? 
Not not as much really because you tend to do quite well, a lot. We've done the due diligence. Yeah, we've done it's all the dating. We sort of know you know, all mm-hmm. their bad habits before we actually get into a relationship. Mm. So uh, <laughs> it, it is that. It's a, you know, it's a people business. So we have to sort of make sure that that people are, and, and yeah, we've had some we've had some people that we thought were certain, you know, had certain skills that didn't have those skills and actually but they had other skills that we weren't aware of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're probably better than we thought. So I think that's what we always find that we we sort of know the the basics, yeah. But it's always quite a, a delight when you find that other people move on and get encouraged by it. I mean, for us, it's you know we're really proud of this business that you know we get people coming into it and they talk about C and W as though you know it's it's theirs, which clearly it, it is. Mm-hmm. And that's how we want to be communicated it isn't a oh it's mike and mine yeah it's 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 all of ours together and i think that's the that is the bit that i always that, that's what we're always striving to do and i suppose that's the hard bit yeah. actually that is the hardest bit keeping those values keeping that culture you know when you talk when we talk about why did we start the business it's because we hated corporate sort of structuring and the like. And here we are, how many years down the line and we're talking about, oh, it's a corporate structure, but what we're trying to do it in a way that lets everybody have a voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yes, we've got jobs and we have responsibilities, but there are no barriers. Everybody knows Mike and myself in this business. They just come and talk to us, you know, which I think is great to talk about. So is it, is it like a, a headquarters where you guys are based most of the time or do you kind of... No. Well, we, I mean, we tend to operate from the Midlands because that's where we live, you know, right. but, but we will be... We're all know, right. we're we'll everywhere. Be... Glasgow, you know, Manchester, we're, we're everywhere. So we tend to... There's, there's two sort of things going. Yeah, we're still, we call it being on the tools. So we're still very active in, in the jobs because we like... That's what we like doing. Well, mm. So we don't really want to change that. No. You know, we have a... Uh, an FD that sort of does all of the the boring stuff like the spreadsheets and everything. Tell him he's boring. He's boring. He loves it. No, no, no. Sorry, the really important stuff. Yeah, I just rephrased that. For the adding up. FD, can you cut the other bit out and just say the important stuff that the FD does? That would be great. Um, so, uh, but then it gives us the opportunity to, you know, to do what we love doing and go uh, mm-hmm. and do this architecture stuff i was chatting with somebody a few weeks ago and i, and I was just saying you know i had a really exhausting week it was thursday and uh, they said oh you know well you're the boss take tomorrow off and i said i, I can't do that it's just not i'm not the way i'm just not the way i'm wired mm-hmm. you know i never do that just because you know we're shareholders and it's that it just never occurs to me that that's what we should do or it wouldn't even it wouldn't enter into Either of our mentalities, I don't think, to, to operate in that way. Um, but I think I think the thing is, so <clears throat> so when when practices join us, they're joining us for a reason. Often it's because they don't think they've reached their potential, yeah, and they want to develop and they want to evolve. And I think sometimes there's a frustration that they think it's just going to happen immediately. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it takes at least two years for it to bed in properly. And even for them to do that, you know, to get involved. So, you know, we, we, we work one of the one of the first big mergers that we did with a practice in, in the Midlands was because we had too much work, they didn't have enough. It worked really, really well. Um, and initially they were gonna be XX Gustolfin and Ryan. And after three months they just said, Oh, can we just drop our name? Because it actually makes more sense for us to be part of you. That's what we want, and yeah. that's that's kind of the best test, isn't it? Really. Um, uh, but yeah, people th- th- you talk about, I suppose, tensions. The tension is that you know maybe they think they're going to get there quicker, but you know it's I think it's, it does. It does. I mean, they always say to us when they join the practice that what they slightly get frustrated about is the fact that clients then treat them differently. You know, they give them bigger jobs. So they've spent years trying to get bigger jobs. And they become part of CW. And suddenly and the client, it's, yeah. The client treats them differently. 
Yeah. You know, why is that? Because he's actually the same people doing the work that there was when they were a practice of, you know, 15. But I suppose what I see is it's the confidence that the client has with the organization and the structure. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, the heart of this, the business, the business of, of, of architecture, which is C&W, that's why it's so important that we look after that business. You know, we do all the things uh, that we are doing to to keep it in in good shape. You know, we keep it serviced. We yeah, we check to make sure that we're not running out of fuel. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we have to pay a few people a bit of money occasionally. Yeah. Um, but we also talk about us being you know custodians of the business for now. Yeah, you know, the name's been going longer than we've been part of it. You know? mm-hmm. So it hopefully, we'll carry on beyond that. So you need to find new people that will become those custodians and have the same slightly soppy view of C and W that, that that we have. And we were chatting with somebody. Is it a lifestyle? That, is it a lifestyle? Are we like architectural influence, isn't it? I don't know. Well, we we might say yeah. after this, might we? Could be, yeah. This yeah. could be our big break. This is the launch pad. It is. This is a launch you know, pad to yeah. uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> notoriety. No, that's wrong, isn't it? It's the Mike and Paul podcast. I think I think that's the next yeah. thing. We had we you know, we had thought we could sort of make this into a career, but you know, uh, we like doodling too much. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it is it is it's 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 getting people to enjoy it really. And I'd say, you know, I've worked, not worked in many practices before, but where I think um where I think we win is that is that collaboration and that yeah it might, that and, give you, design, and give you, and give you belief to people that they can do it mm-hmm. yeah you know absolutely like if you if you're told you can't do it the logical thing is you don't do it if you're told give it a go you might make a mistake but you know if you haven't tried it you'll never know whether you can or you can't and i think that's a that's their mantra, you know. I'm not saying that we go and do lots of risky things, but what we do is we give people the the freedom to, you know, go and try things, you know, do things that they probably haven't done, and well, then yeah. by default we learn from those. I think, don't we? Yeah, and I think as as well. I mean, you know, as a, as an architectural practice, I mean, you know, don't get me started on architectural education, but but I think I think we we support. Go on then. We support that'd be the, that'd be the, the next architect. podcast. We yeah. support we support you know students going through their through their qualifications because I think there's such a disconnect between oh. learning to be an architect and actually being an architect. Yeah, but isn't reality. that? But isn't that through your life experiences? I think because we're we're gentlemen of a certain age that have had children that have gone through university and you've seen all of the sort of the the pros and cons of you know university education. Hmm. Uh, along with, you know, the differences between, um, you know, men and women, you know, and the way that they're perceived when they go into business, you know, we like to think we're crusaders. We can make a difference to all those things that are wrong. Yeah, uh, we've got a Viking different... helmet. Yeah, yeah, we got Viking helmets. We can we can do that. But that that is another, you know, thing that we do in in business that we can change it. You know, yeah. we can. The rules are what we make it. It's done, and that's the and that's the exciting bit about you know running your own business, you know, whether it's architecture or wherever it is. Somebody's got to do it, and that that should be us. You know, we have we have the duty to try and make sure that we do have equality in the business. We do, you know, we have diversity that allows anybody, whatever. You know, whatever flavour you are, come and work for us. As long as you do a good job, actually, we don't we don't care. Yeah, as long as you're enjoy you know, you're enjoying what you do. Yeah. So, um, and that's another bit that I think is, yeah, we're a business. Yeah, we're trying to make profits, but our all of this added value that you can, you know, you can add to this world that we live in. You know, this strange world that we live in, um, and that's from these. You know, you go back to these stupid idea that we thought that we could create a business at the start. You're, um, you know, the the opportunities that you have once you start to think slightly outside the box and not just, you know, your core day job. You know what we can make a difference to people's lives. I think yeah. it's, it it is. It's absolutely 
Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Great I mean, to be able to do it. I mean, my wife saw me working in large-scale practices, and one of the first things she said to me when we talked about doing it, she said, just make sure you don't – make sure it doesn't get too big. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just make sure it doesn't get too big and it's controllable. And I'm, and I'm still waiting for it to get too big yeah. for it to actually be a problem. I mean, people say to us, what, what, what keeps you up at night? You know, nothing really, to be no. fair, because we've got – We've got a great business. We've got a great crew around us, so why wouldn't we sleep at night? Everybody everybody loves it. And I think there's space for everyone. We've got an architect who works with us at the moment, and he's made it really clear that he's interested in business development and going out and trying to win work. But yet you've got other architects who just want to design the best building that they can, and you've got other people who want to prove that they can make the best 3D model or printing the best 3D printed model or doing the best visual or best graphic or whatever it is, there's space for everyone. But that mm-hmm. easily flows through into the buildings that we do. You know, we touch people's lives as, you know, in the architecture profession in many, many ways. You know, we can make improvements in people's lives. So, you know, you've not only got your business, but you've got the 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 outcome of what the business does, you know, and all the buildings that we're producing around the country. You know, that element of delight from a client that was just not expecting what they were going to get. And they are like absolutely, you know, bowled over by the the quality of it. That, again, is something that, you know, is a great, a great outcome of having something which is more successful. I constantly, I constantly see projects now that we win. I know. Are they just, and it just, because they look really good. Well, just the opportunities we get now. The opportunities we're getting just staggering. Really. You think, how on earth have we managed to get that project? Yeah, you know, it's it's like we haven't. It's probably somebody else. They probably so much yeah. better than us. So that's that person that was yeah. more intelligent. So we're, we'll 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 start to conclude the conversation here. I think that's probably a good a good spot for us to to, to wrap it up. Yeah. But it, it's a really you know it's actually amazing actually to hear you guys' story and I. You know, I, I love the the kind of the business sense behind it and the collaborative sense behind it, and using mergers as a really effective way of growing and unifying an architectural practice. And actually, you you know, positioned yourself as one of the leading strongest practices in the UK as a as a result of doing it. So, absolutely amazing. And thank you very much, guys, for for being on the show today. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been thanks, good. Thanks for listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> We've really enjoyed it. Thank yeah. you for first. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for asking us. Yeah, yeah. 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 My pleasure. And that's a wrap. And one more thing. If you haven't already, please do head on over to iTunes or Spotify and leave us a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show and we'd love to get your feedback and we'd love to hear what it is that you'd like to see more of and what you love about the show already. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. And now a message from today's sponsor. If you haven't used RCAT's Spec Wizard before, hey, now's the time to try it out. Spec Wizard is a patented tool that allows you to specify a product in just three steps, all for free and without even registering. Step one, research and find the right products for your project on RCAT.com. Step two, use the Spec Wizard tool to select the right products and options. Step three, generate a complete three-part CSI or CSC specification based on your selections. Now, maybe you enjoy toiling through long documents, parsing things together and creating a specification. And if that's your case, well, this probably isn't for you. But if you want to get it done in half the time that it used to, or even a fraction of that, RCAT is your place. Again, Spec Wizard is free to use and requires zero registration. So to use it, head over to RCAT.com. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com today and try Spec Wizard. RCAT is a fantastic resource and one that I counted on when I was actively practicing architecture to help me simplify getting these important specifications right. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.